Good evening. Welcome to the November 1st, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. I will now call the meeting to order. Please note that this meeting is being attended by the Planning Commission, staff, and the applicant via teleconference. Thank you for your patience as we continue to navigate city business through the meeting, this meeting process. For the benefit of the public and as required by the Brown Act, the vote will be by roll call. Call. City Clerk Harper, will you please take roll? Yes, Chair Miller. Here. Commissioner Winkler. Commissioner Campbell. Here. Commissioner Thomas. Commissioner Klinger. Here. Commissioner Winkler. Here. We have four members present. We have a quorum, thank you. Thank you. Uh, approval of the agenda by motion of the Planning Commission. This is the time to notify the public of any changes to the agenda, rearrange the order of the agenda, and provide an opportunity for any member of the Planning Commission or staff to request an item to be removed from the consent calendar for separate action. If we do not have any of these, do we have a motion and a second? I move that we accept the agenda as it's written. And I'll put in a second. City Clerk Harper. Chair Miller, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Thomas is absent. Commissioner Klinger, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Campbell, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Winkler, how do you vote? Uh, yes. Motion carries four votes. Four Thank to one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, public comments, uh, public communications at this time, members of the public may address the commission regarding the items on the planning commission agenda. Pursuant to the Brown Act, the commission cannot discuss or take action on any items not on the agenda unless authorized by law. Those members of the public wishing to provide comments were asked to send comments via email to the city clerk, city clerk or via the comment icon on the city website before 6 p.m. today. Comments provi provided via email by 6 p.m. will be distributed to the Planning Commission and posted on the city website for review by the public. Email comments received after that time will be posted on the city's website and forwarded to the Planning Commission after the meeting. Any documents for review should be sent to the city clerk prior to the meeting for distribution. Those members of the public wishing to call in can join the Zoom meeting from any electronic device by clicking the following link or by dialing the number. Those members requesting to speak by phone or on Zoom can unmute by entering star six when called upon to speak. Once in the meeting, you will be added to the waiting room until the public comment period begins. At that time, you'll be allowed to join the meeting to offer your comments. Commenters who are not applicants will be allotted five minutes to address the commission. The Ability to comment will be disabled when your allotted time has expired. City Clerk Harper, Harper do we have any emailed comments? Yes, um, six email comments were received. They've been um, distributed to the commissioners and they will be available on the city's website. Thank you. Uh, and now onto the consent calendar, uh, approval of the October 18th, 2021 Planning Commission meet, many, meeting minutes. Do we have a motion and a second? So moved. I'll second. City Clerk Harper, can we take roll, please? Yes, Chair Miller, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Klinger, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Campbell, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Winkler, how do you vote? Yes. Motion carries four votes yes. Thank you. On to the public hearing, item B, conditional use permit 21-4 at 255 17th Street. Uh, is there a report? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, good evening, Chairman and Planning Commissioners. This is uh, Assistant Planner Marco Cuevas. And uh, tonight's proposal is from uh, Stephen Senekoff, the applicant, who on behalf of um, the property owners, Cameron and Ra Ashley Rados, filed an application for conditional use permit 21-4, requesting approval to allow for the interior remodel and addition of a second story to an existing single family residence um, that is non-conforming due to setbacks. Uh, next slide, please. Next one again, please. Great. So the subject site is located on the southwesterly corner of 17th Street and Landing Avenue in the Old Town area, and it's developed currently developed with a single story, single family residence with an attached two car garage. Um, the subject site is located in RHD 20 zone and is surrounded by residential uses on all sides. 
Next slide, please. Well, the subject property is a corner lot and it measures 25 feet wide by 100 feet deep. Um, based on these dimensions, the development standard requires a north northerly or street side, um, street side yard setback of three feet, nine inches. Uh, the existing northerly side yard setback is currently at three feet. Um, all other setbacks and zoning requirements are code compliant with this property. Um, the subject property, once again, is non-conforming due to its setback along the northerly street side of the property. And according to table 11.2.05.015 of the Seal Beach Municipal Code, the side yard, side yard street side um, setback for corner lots in the RHD 20 zone is required to be at least 15% of the lot width. So uh, the applicant is proposing to add um, a 1,355 square foot second story addition to the residence. Um, the interior remodel um, proposes to relocate the existing first floor bedrooms and the proposed second floor um, or onto the second floor in order to accommodate an expanded open layout design for uh, an existing kitchen, dining and living room areas. Um, as proposed, the home will have a total of four bedrooms and three bathrooms and the new area of construction would be almost entirely covered um, by the existing structures um, uh, and would be set back to maintain the required three foot, nine inch northerly street side setback. So the total lot coverage is calculated at 60.64%, which is less than the 75% um, total that's uh, required in that zone. So the slide in front of you, you can see the um, existing layout of the home, but you can also see the existing two car garage to the left, followed by um, what will be the uh, new second floor addition added to the second floor, uh, added to the single um, family home. Um, next slide, please. So um, this gives you the elevation views of the property. So once again, it's going from a single story residence to a, 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 um, a two story residence. And, um, and once again, the northerly side uh, that would be uh, added um, to the property on the northerly side, that addition of the second floor would be set back um, three feet, nine inches to comply with the current code. Um, next slide, please. So this is um, a picture or view of the home as it, as it is now. So, so you can see the, um, if you can imagine the uh, second floor being on top of this, but being set back from that street side so that it complies with the, um, or is consistent with the three foot nine inch um, side setback. And if you're looking at the property in, in terms of mass, it would very much be um, um, very much like the house that's next to it there on the, um, well, that would be the screen to the left. Um, next slide, please. And this is a, um, the other side of the elevation view of the house, um, where you can see going into the alley side where um, you have a two car garage. Of course, the second store would be built uh, right above that. And next slide, please. So um, as part of our analysis, um, a CUP is required due to the parcel having a structure um, that is that does not meet the um, setback requirements. So once again, it's just shy of that by nine inches. So the um, Sill Beach Municipal Code allows for improvements which involve the alteration or addition of residences that are non-conforming due to setbacks, subject to approval of a condition use permit. Um, all, proposed, all proposed improvements to the subject property conform to the requirements of the Seal Beach Municipal Code. And um, once again, the um, conditional use permit is required due to the parcel having a structure that does not meet setback requirements. The addition would not intensify the non-conforming setback as the addition would have a setback of the required three feet, nine inches from the side property line along the northerly street side setback. The proposed addition would be consistent with other residential properties and would not intensify the existing non-conformity on their property because the proposed addition would be would meet the setback requirements for the RHD 20 zone and would maintain all required setbacks. Um, and once again, the uh, alterations proposed are consistent with the provisions of the Silk Beach Municipal Code. Uh, next slide. 
Um, so with that, um, staff recommends that the plan commission adopt resolution 21-14, approving condition use permit 21-4. And that concludes my presentation. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any commissioner comments? I have a question. On the uh, resolution, section five, number two, it says all plan check and future construction shall be in substantial compliance. Aren't they supposed to be in compliance? Um, checking that section right now. Is that page three or four? I'm sorry, Commissioner Campbell, what number was that again, please? Section five, number two, Section on five. page three of four. It says they're supposed to be in sub substantial compliance. I thought they're supposed and to be in compliance with the plans. Commissioner, Commissioner Campbell, um, this is Barry Curtis. Um, when the plans come in for, for building plan check, um, things like roof slope and things like that, um, may need to be altered by an inch, half an inch or so, all within code standards. Okay. That, that's what that's talking about. Or if it's talking about okay. you know, the exterior treatments, like paint colors, things like that, those could change. It's, it's generally consistent, but it might be little teeny tweaks that are necessary to get it through the building code. Okay. Thank you, Barry. Sure. Any other commissioner comments? Okay. I'll now open the public hearing. Uh, City Clerk Harbor, do we have any emailed comments? Yes, we um, six email comments were received in support of this item. Thank you. Would the applicant like to address the commission? Is the applicant on the line? Is this one of the? Yes, um, there's someone here from Senecoff Architects. Yes, I'm on the line. I'm Steve Senecoff, Senecoff Architects. I have nothing. Uh, further to say, I think Marco presented very well, and I think that we are um, in compliance, and um, I'm here to answer any questions. I'm confused. I'm sorry? <laughs> I was being facetious. Uh -oh. This is Rondi Winkler. It's a nice home. I walk by it every day when I walk to school. Mm -hmm. I look forward to what it looks like when it's done. I don't Thank have anything. Does anybody else have anything? I'll now close the public hearing. Do we have a motion and a second? I'll motion to approve. I'll second it. Mr. Parker, can we take roll, please? Or vote? Sure. Chair Miller, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Thomas, do you care to vote? Uh, no, I'm going to abstain seeing as I just oh. joined. Thank you, though. Perfect. Commissioner Klinger? Yes. How do you vote? Commissioner Campbell, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Winkler, how do you vote? Yes. Motion carries four to one. One with um, Commissioner Thomas abstaining. Thank you. Uh, Assistant the City Attorney Grayson? Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't hear your question. Oh, this is just your time to say this is a 10 day oh, period. Yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry, that's okay. <laughs> I was focused on the abstention vote. Okay. Yes, there is a 10 day appeal period from this decision, and the appeal period starts running tomorrow. Thank you. All right. Thank you. On to number uh, item C. Conditional use permit 21-5 at 1709 Apollo Court. Is there a report? Uh, yes. Um, thank you, Chairman and Planning Commissioners. Uh, tonight's second item is conditional use permit 21-5. I'll wait till the slide to catch up to me there. But 21-5. Beautiful. Okay. Great. So um, 21 condition use permit 21-5 is to allow for uh, an indoor recreation facility uh, for a basketball and volleyball center and to allow for the operation of a restaurant cafe 
with the Type 41 alcohol license to sell beer and wine in conjunction with the proposed use at um, 1709 Apollo Court uh, within the Boeing Integrated Defense System or BIDS, specific pine area. Um, I mean, I'll probably say BIDS a few times tonight, so it does stand for the Boeing Integrated Defense Systems Specific Plan Area. Next slide, please. And this is an arrow view of the, the property showing the site location. So the subject site is a 195, 408 square foot parcel located within the planning area two of the Boeing um, integrated or uh, defense systems or bids specific plan and is developed with a, a one building tenant space with two floors. Um, the scope of work is limited to the first floor for this project and it measures 71,151 square feet in area. Uh, the second floor measures 16,351 square feet and is used as office space and is leased by a separate tenant. Um, the subject site currently provides a total of 169 parking spaces. Uh, next slide, please. And so um, this is an expanded view of the uh, Apollo Court area. As you can see, our subject site is to your left at 1709. And uh, I will reference the other properties a little bit later on in the slide presentation. But for this location, um, the bid specific plan area permits gymnasiums and similar facilities for sports related activities and planning areas two and three of the subject um, of the subject area and through approval of a conditional use permit. The bid specific plan area also allows for restaurant uses with on site sale of alcoholic beverages. Uh, the concept for the bid specific plan land use um, plan was to develop uh, was to create a development with the next um, a planned mixed use business park. And the bids area is developed with the mix of light industrial with office and commercial uses along the uh, northeastern area. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a site plan of the actual um, property itself, just focusing on the actual building itself, 1709. So. Uh, as previously mentioned, the applicant proposes to utilize the existing first floor, the 71,000 um, and 151 square feet of tennis space, mainly for a proposed basketball and volleyball center. Um, the applicant proposes to utilize um, 48,453 square feet of that space to create 11 volleyball courts and eight basketball courts, uh, depending on the season. Um, and the remaining 22,698 square feet um, which would be the green shaded area, uh, would be used as office spaces and an area for various offices and uh, shops, uh, Pilates studio, pro shop, recovery and therapy area, um, in addition to the uh, proposed restaurant. Um, so once again, the graphic in front of you, the shaded area would represent the um, 22,698 square foot area. And that would have the other uses other than the uh, courts and the remaining area to the left of that would be for, um, for court use. So the proposed hours of operation are 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Friday. And Saturday and Sunday practices would typically start at 2.30 p.m. with the last uh, practice commencing at approximately 8.30 um, p.m. Next slide, please. So on this slide, we have more of a close-up view of the um, the area, the 22,000 square feet that would be used for um, purposes other than for court use. Um, and with that, um, some of the spaces I previously mentioned um, would be used as office spaces, an area for Pilates, um, a pro shop, a recovery and therapy area, and a restaurant cafe area. Um, the restaurant portion would occupy the middle portion of this floor plan. And I'll get into further detail with that on the next slide. The next slide, please. Thank you. So this is a close-up of the uh, floor plan area, just focusing on the uh, restaurant. So the restaurant, um, the restaurant cafe area is proposed to occupy space approximately 2,700 square feet in area, and would provide a limited menu of items such as sandwiches, um, salads, prepackaged snacks, and so forth. Uh, the alcoholic beverages sold in a restaurant um, would, would be limited to be sold in the restaurant area and, um, and would only be consumed within that cafe area and not allowed outside of this area. 
Um, the restaurant cafe area is intended for use only by patrons or for guests and spectators during practice and tournament events. Um, the proposed hours of operation for the restaurant cafe would follow the same hours as the practice facility with uh, proposed alcohol service from uh, 12 p.m. to 10 p.m., seven days a week. Uh, next slide, please. So um, this, um, the photo in front of you now is, um, shows the, the different um, um, buildings that are located now within that facility. Um, so the subject properties to the upper left, 1709. Um, um, and next to that at, a, at an angle would be 1708. Um, the applicant does operate a, um, an existing facility at, um, sorry, 1718 um, at a diagonal. So they currently operate a, um, a as I previously mentioned, a, um, an existing facility at that location, um, but they have a smaller space to work with there. And the, uh, the 1799 space that you see at your upper right um, would be the location of, of um, something, well, it's a different building, but um, the applicant was able to secure uh, additional parking um, within that facility there. So um, the purpose of this slide was to show the proximity of, of the, uh, the spaces and the sites and see how they're laid out here. Um, um, so um, someone can get an idea of, you know, incoming cars and traffic and so forth. So um, the applicant has stated that the proposed basketball and volleyball center would oper operate primarily as a practice and training facilities for um, local athletes and teams. Um, AIM, the um, company that uh, runs all the operations, has uh, proposed uh, team practices and a limited number of private training sessions as part of its weekday operations. Uh, on weekends, the facility would be made available for local league tournament games. And the facility is would employ three full-time staff members to monitor daily operations, which will consist of a fixed schedule of team practices with periodic league tournament games on weekends. Uh, weekly team practices will be scheduled in two-hour sessions within, um, within a gym area. Um, it, should be, um, it should be mentioned that the applicant still intends to operate the facility simultaneously with the existing facility and coordinate scheduling and activity, activities accordingly. Um, next slide, please. So as far as our analysis for parking, um, a, um, the parking analysis evaluated uh, the highest peak demand for the total number of persons using the facility and parking spaces at the proposed facility. Uh, parking spaces re are required, um, required to support the sport activities were determined based upon the operating time schedules, number of participants, um, number of spectators, and um, basically some average vehicle riderships. Um, the analysis concludes that the demand for parking is lowest during weekday practices and highest when league games are played during the weekends. Uh, it should be noted that the applicant has secured access to an additional 110 parking spaces at a neighboring facility at 1799 Apollo Court, which was shown in the previous slide, for use when demand for, for demand for when parking is very high or an additional, uh, as for additional capacity as needed during weekend tournaments. Um, so um, staff is comfortable with recommending a conditional uh, approval for the base use of weekday practice facilities. However, to ensure that there is sufficient parking provided for weekend league games and special tournaments, um, staff believes that additional expert analysis is required. Uh, as such, uh, staff um, has included as an additional condition um, that is placed um, that would require professional parking demand analysis to be prepared for review and approved by the, the Director of Community Development prior to any tournament or special event taking place at the subject facility. And to require that any tournament or special event uh, must comply with the requirements of the parking demand analysis. Uh, the parking demand ana analysis would be used to ensure that on-site parking will be sufficient to satisfy amount, the amount of parking required by the proposed facility while not negatively impacting surrounding uses. Next slide, please. As part of the alcohol review um, analysis, 
um, the city does require a um, compliance with um, section 11.4.05.015, which requires an approval of a CUP for each alcoholic, alcoholic beverage establishment. Um, and along with that, um, Sewage Municipal Code also requires all new alcohol licenses to be in compliance with um, policy 600-1. So um, with that, the consumption is restricted um, within the restaurant area. And, and um, with that also, the, um, this alcohol license in particular is uh, specific to what's called the type 41 alcohol license, which is commonly used um, with restaurants and authorizes sale, the sale of beer and wine. Um, uh, and so it would just be for distilled, um, I'm sorry, for um, a beer and wine. Uh, distilled spirits are not um, allowed as a part of this. And the business um, as part of the restaurant would still have to operate a, as a um, bona fide eating establishment as well, um, which means that the uh, businesses must, the business must um, maintain suitable kitchen facilities and much, must make actual and substantial um, meals for consumption on the premises. Um, along with some of the provisions for that license is that it does allow um, minors within that restaurant area because obviously it's a restaurant area. So it's not exclusive just to um, the consumption of alcohol or beverage, but um, is more conducive to more of like a family environment as well. Um, let's see. So let's find my place here. Um, Lastly, the um, approval of the um, alcohol license also requires approval through um, ABC. And, um, and let's see. And uh, this, um, this application has been conditioned um, so that um, there's conditions opposed, imposed on the establishment to ensure the proper service of alcohol to patrons in compliance with city code policy 600 1. And um, That. And I should also mention that um, along with compliance to 600, city, city council policy 600-1 is that uh, one of the requirements is that it does um, require to be um, at least 100 feet from any neighboring residence. Um, per my calculations, um, there's, prop, there's um, residential properties across the street to the north and then to the west. And uh, by my calculations, we're approximately 200 feet away from those areas as well. Um, next slide, please. So these are um, photos of the, the, the structure, the um, building itself. So the left is the northeast entrance. That's where um, the, the athletes and um, so forth would walk into that entrance. And the picture to the, to the right is the um, north elevation. Um, that's what you would see from the, the street side. And uh, next slide, please. So for that, our recommended action is um, staff um, recommends, well, let me start that again. Our conclusion is that after conducting the public hearing and receiving testimony, um, staff recommends that the Planning Commission adopt resolution 21-15, approving CUP 21-5 to allow an indoor recreational facility and to allow the operation of a restaurant cafe with the type 41 alcohol license in conjunction with the proposed use at 1709 Apollo Court. So that concludes my presentation and I'll be happy to answer any questions. And I will okay. say the, uh, the um, seems like the applicants, um, the applicant and their team is um, also um, in a meeting and would be happy to answer any questions as well. Um, Mark Osberry, um, can you also touch on the errata quickly? Yes. Yeah, so we also have um, an errata or um, it's a memorandum with this. So uh, this deals with um, a change to condition number 20 of the resolution. So um, number um, resolution 20, I'm sorry, condition 20 of resolution 21-15 currently reads that uh, a, a minimum of um, 169 on-site parking spaces must remain available for the basketball, volleyball center and restaurant cafe use. At no time may um, 
May fees be charged for parking served in the facility. Um, as a brief overview of that, um, it says uh, this condition was included to alleviate concerns regarding impacts to surrounding uses and businesses with the previous facility located at 1718 Apollo Court regarding parking, noise, and site maintenance. Um, staff is not aware of any impacts associated with the original facility since receiving approval. Um, the proposed condition 19 requires the applicant um, to prepare a parking demand analysis for review and approval by the director of community development prior to the occurrence of any tournament at the proposed facility. Uh, not coincidentally, tournaments are also, um, are also um, provided when paid parking can be feasible to the operator. Uh, subject to thorough analysis of paid parking and its potential impacts through the uh, required parking demand analysis, and the implementation of any and all recommended operational features contained therein and to the satisfaction of direct to the director of community development. Staff is comfortable with allowing a provision for paid parking during weekend tournaments. Therefore, staff recommends the following revision to condition number 20 of resolution 21-15, which states a minimum of 169 on-site parking spaces must remain available for the basketball volleyball center and restaurant cafe use. Paid or fee parking is prohibited unless analyzed as a part of the parking demand analysis and found by the Director of Community Development to have no impacts surrounding uses. And uh, that covers the uh, errata um, memorandum for this item. Thank you. Are there any commissioner comments? Uh, yes, I have one. I have a question. It's Commissioner Klinger here. Uh, I have a question about traffic when there's league games, because it's uh, that's a narrow area. It's you know a short time frame when as many as 275 are expected to attend some of the games. Um, what kind of provision do they have to examine that? Uh, yes, Commissioner Klinger. Um, um, as part of this, as, as part of the conditions, we did condition it that, of course, as I mentioned, that the um, the applicant conduct the have or have conducted a, um, a a thorough traffic or parking demand analysis, but um, also that there's um, other conditions um, that would um, require the um, the applicant to provide. Um, 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 Parking, like parking managers, so they'll be directing people to, to ensure that they park in the in the correct spot, and also be directing them um, to the areas they need to go to as well. Um, as we mentioned, there's uh, we're not aware that um, with their existing facility that there has been any um, traffic issues. And going off our experience from the previous conditional use permit allowed for this, um, a formal traffic analysis um, was not done. Um, at this time, we didn't feel that one was needed for, for this particular location just because of um, where it's located and, and also um, because it, it's, it, it's more of a, of a, it's more to the far right of that um, facility, which, um, which gives it more space and a little bit more, um, uh, more, more, um, should I say, more, more exclusivity, if you will, that, um, that they'll park in those areas and not create backups and, and um, be tempted to park in other areas other than where they're supposed to. Does, does that mean that they are, are already having those kinds of uh, traffic coming for games already? You know, when you, I'm talking about, you know, the possibility of lining up out there on Westminster. Um, my understanding was that um, there are tournaments um, held um, every so often at the existing facility. Um, I think the, um, the applicant can probably uh, fill, fill you in in uh, just a, a little bit more detail than that. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't mind um, commenting if you, if you need me to, Commissioner. I have some questions. So, uh, and, and my name is Billy. Um, I'm the director at AIM. So we've been operating in this, uh, uh, in, the, in, in the Boeing business park here for just about seven years um, with, you know, just about a tournament every weekend. And um, 
um, I think one of the, you know, we, and without any traffic concerns, I think one of the, one of the benefits of our business model is um, we operate, most of our operation operating hours are outside of regular business hours in the business park. Um, and I think with um, um, especially the traffic flows coming in from Westminster and the way that the, the, the traffic light there is, is timed. We we've never seen any, any kind of issues coming in off of Westminster. And you already have uh, that kind of a, 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 an attendance up to 200 or 300 people. I wouldn't say that we're, uh, we're to that level. Um, um, uh, but I think also one of the benefits that we're going to have with the 1709 property is that there's a specific entrance coming in from Westminster uh, versus having to enter from um, Apollo. So you can actually get to the 1709 address directly from Westminster versus having to turn in on Apollo um, and come down to the cul-de-sac. Okay, thank you. Billy, what, what, uh, what percentage of your business is non-business hours? I run through there a lot and I've seen like your guys' games. Traffic does not exist on Westminster on weekends, especially in this area. It's, there's hardly any cars out. So I don't, I, I know that. And I know in the evenings, it's like after Boeing shuts down, it's the same, but what percent of your business is after like your standard nine to five business hours? Um, I would say 90% of our business is after, That's after what regular say. business hours. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Campbell. I have some, I have some questions. Um, there's, a, there's the original basketball location. Have they ever had any problems with that other location? Um, yes, Commissioner Campbell. Um, I did um, uh, reach out to the police department uh, just to ensure if there's been any complaints of any sorts, um, any issues, even with traffic. And they have indicated that they have, there has not been any incidences of, of such. So um, to that, I'd have to say no, but um, um, yeah, there's just none that, that we're aware of at this point. Okay, because uh, one of the uh, section 525, it said uh, staff must routinely patrol the parking lot and discourage groups loitering in the parking lot before and after the events. Is that currently being done with that uh, first basketball facility? Uh, yes. yes. Commissioner, oh, Commissioner sorry. Um, to our knowledge, it is it is being done. Um, I'll, I'll let the um, um, the applicant um, speak on behalf of that. But once again, that was um, that was an original um, um, condition that was carried over from the, um, the the police department that we decided to to put into this condition as well for good measure. Okay. Um, now, you, is this going to be on the first floor of this building? Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, what is the height of that room where you're going to have the basketball uh, games or the practices? What is the height? I'm curious because whenever I see a basketball game, it's in a place like Madison Square Garden or something like that. And obviously, height is not an issue in a facility like that. I was just curious as to if they're playing basketball, what kind of a height do you need? Hmm. So I, I believe the ceilings um, are, uh, are 32 to 35 feet at 1709 um, um, within that range. And for us, the height is more important for volleyball. Um, um, when, you're, when you have a high level volleyball going on, you want, um, especially boys volleyball, you want a lot more um, room to work with. Uh, basketball, not as important, but for volleyball, it is uh, much more important. Well, I've seen some of the basketball players toss a ball almost all the way to the other end of the court and you've got to get some height for that so it's about 32 to 35 feet is that where yours is going to be yes ma'am okay um now uh, staff recommended an additional traffic study um when do you expect to have that done by commissioner campbell um we're actually recommending a parking analysis um, and it'll be as quick as, you know, the applicant can answer how quickly they think that can get turned around. Yeah. So we already, we already started speaking with um, the group that, uh, that did our previous uh, parking demand analysis. Um, and so hopefully they can, um, they can uh, get that process started for us pretty quickly. And we can have that back over to 
uh, the new uh, community development director within the next month. Okay. Okay. Now it says there's a parking monitor for the other site to be sure patrons park where they should. Um, are you going to have one? Yes, ma'am. And we, and we have that person every weekend. So okay. Uh, I think for us, and of course, as as Marco mentioned, one of the previous conditions um, as, when we were first getting started here was that we be a good neighbor and and supply that person. Um, and and we still maintain that we want to be a great neighbor in this business park. Uh, this business park has been great to us. Um, it's a very uh, family, you know, community here, and we we like to take care of each other and. Um, so that is one thing that we will continue and, and, uh, we want to make sure that, that every other business in this business park feels good about having us here and knows that we're taking care of their, their businesses when they are not here, um, while we operate. Okay. Um, it says under section 527 parking monitor there at least 20 minutes before the games. How long does the parking monitor have to stay there? You've got a start time, but how long does he have to stay there? What's his? Yes. So we, we actually have that. We actually have that staff member in shifts. So we kind of, we kind of divvy up those shifts um, so that it's not the same person throughout the day. Okay. Um, so, so just so you're aware, if, if we have, um, if we have an 8 a.m. start time on a Saturday um, uh, for league matches, we usually have somebody here by 630 or 7, um, uh, not only to set up cones to prevent cars from going in other lots, uh, but also to, to continue to monitor and make sure that that patrons are parking in the correct spot, that we're picking up um, uh, any trash or anything that's coming uh, from vehicles. Um, so it's 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 a multi it's a multi use position. It's not just making sure that people are parking in the in the correct place, but also making sure that um, that we're keeping the community here clean and, and that everything is flowing uh, smoothly. Okay, it's great. Thank you. I don't have any more questions. Uh, this is Rondi Wingler. I have a few. Uh, the first is, I am, I was rather surprised that you'd already had a similar facility here because I hadn't heard anything about it. Uh, but I don't have any children right now either. Uh, so, how long was the? How long has the first? Uh, facility been in action? So I think, I believe our first CUP was approved in 2014. Okay. And so you started operating around that time. Yes, ma'am. And I know that from comments that I've uh, made with friends that they said this kind of facility is so needed because of this times to practice and they're hard to put find it a reasonable cost. I have no objections to this. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah, Chair Miller, uh, this is Commissioner Thomas. Can I ask a question? Yes, please go for it. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, my question is, um, so now, um, so you're gonna keep both, uh, I mean, I'm, I think I heard this, but, uh, and this is a question for the applicant, you're gonna keep both uh, facilities in operation, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, yeah. And so you can have bigger events, more courts, more, you know, you can have bigger tournaments, that kind of thing. Perfect. And um, anyone who's had kids who've done club sports knows these things are crazy. Um, but uh, no, I, I, I like the facility there. I've been to it. It's, uh, uh, it's all right. Let me ask this question. My question is more um, administrative and that is uh, by approving this, um, the CUP. So we are giving an approval that includes that there will be a subsequent parking analysis that we're going to allow staff to review and, uh, and, and make judgment on. Is that a true statement? Commissioner Thomas, that is uh, the recommendation of staff, correct? Okay. So let me ask this is, so if, uh, if, if, a, if a parking analysis is submitted in you know, staff finds it lacking. Um, do you send, uh, I mean, do, does that kill the project or do you, do you send uh, the applicant back to sharpen their pencil or 
Explain to me how that works. Commissioner Thomas, we would work very closely with the applicants and their consultant to ensure that um, that it was resolved. If there was no resolution, um, one of two things could happen. They could not do the tournaments. I, I don't foresee that being a, a result. Um, or we could come back to the commission for further consideration. And the standard you're using to make that determination is just kind of general planning and engineering practice and meeting whatever the current codes and, and requirements are? That's correct. It, it'll be, you know, it, it'll be a professional firm that does parking analyses, staff um, and public works employee, employees as well. will take a look at that based on, on planning and um, parking practices and make that determination whether or not we agree with the findings of the consultant. No, it, I think it's if we have issues, we can refine it with the consultant until it's resolved. All right. All right. Very good. Um, okay. Uh, that's fine. I have no more questions. Thank you, uh, Chairman. I have another one. Um, is it possible for us to know uh, how that analysis works out? If, even if, if, to, if you find it or you approve it, can we know about that? Absolutely, Commissioner. We will um, provide that to the commission um, before we take that action so you're aware of it. I should say when we take that action so you're aware of it. Okay, thank you. I have a question on the parking while we're there. Is, is that just weekend analysis? Is that right? That, that's correct. That's, that's unusual to me just because I've, I've run through there so many times. I don't see any cars in there besides, uh, besides those that aim. And also I noticed that when I go through, a lot of people get dropped off. Is that going to be taken into consideration? Uh, Mr. Chairman, all that will get taken into consideration. And as I indicated, I don't expect there to be issues. Okay. Uh, the, the problem is it was analyzed with the initial um, site. Um, and just in the, in the abundance of caution, because we're essentially doubling, you know, between the two facilities, doubling the size of potential events, we want to make sure that for some reason that doesn't result in just a doubling more than just a doubling of the, the impacts. I, I don't expect that to be the case. We just want to make sure that's the case. Sounds good. Thank you. Any other comments? City Clerk Harper, do we have any uh, emailed comments? No email comments um, for this item. Applicant, are you good to move on? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'll now close the public hearing. Do we have a motion and a second? I move to approve, Commissioner Thomas. I'll, I'll second it, Commissioner Klinger. We have a vote by roll call, please. Chair Miller, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Thomas, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Klinger, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Campbell, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Winkler, how do you vote? Yes. Motion carries by votes, yes. Thank you. Assistant City Attorney Grayson. Yes, this is a 10 day appeal period from this decision. The appeal period starts running tomorrow. Thank you. Good luck with your business. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there a director's report? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, quickly at your last meeting, I indicated that um, a new director have been selected. I, I'm not sure how much any of you have heard, but I just wanted to report out on that quickly. The new director um, is uh, Alexa Smittle. She is currently the director of community development for the city of Westminster. She has extensive experience um, working with similar department to the cities and um, as well as a, is a lot of work over her career in economic development type of, of uh, projects. She lives, I'll let her introduce herself when the time comes, but she basically, she lives locally um, in Huntington Beach with her family and is invested in the, the general local community here. Um, I think that she uh, was a great selection by the city manager. I think she'll serve the city um, and the department wonderfully. So I, I think that's something to be excited about for both the commission and the city and the, and the department. Um, so I'll let you know that. And then just reporting back on one, one thing, um, this will be my last meeting with the commission. And I wanted to get back to uh, an issue that Commissioner Thomas raised a couple of meetings ago regarding um, building heights in the trailer park. Um, 
this is what we found. I, I have a suggestion, um, and, I, and I'm, we'll be looking for the commission to give us further direction how you want us to proceed. But um, what we found is the trailer park, um, gosh darn it, when I was here before, it was Seal Beach Trailer Park, um, Seal Beach Shores, um, basically has a 25 foot height limit in there, which matches virtually all of the rest of the city's residential areas, Surfside being allowed to be a little bit taller and um, I believe up at Rossmore, um, behind shops at Rossmore, um, I think the high density there's allowed to be a little bit higher, but everywhere else in the city, Old Town, The Hill, College Park East, College Park West, um, are all required to be uh, no more than 25 feet in height. So staff's recommendation, I guess we look back and about 12 years ago, 13 years ago now, the city the city, including uh, through the city council, went through and looked at height limits. It's a contentious area in a beach, a contentious issue in a beach community. Um, looked at that and determined to set this kind of uniform height limit in the city. Um, staff wouldn't recommend creating a separate height limit that was different for Seal Beach Shores. We think that it should be consistent with the rest of the residential areas. Um, I don't know that I from a professional you know, opinion, I don't know that I have, would have a problem if the city was to consider raising those high limits, but it's been a contentious issue in the past. And, and we certainly wouldn't recommend changing the high limit in Seal Beach Shores without changing it in those other areas of the city. So staff recommendation is gonna be that, that you let staff respond back to that, that uh, resident and advise them of such. Um, However, if the, the commission wants to consider this item and making a recommendation to city council, we can agenda, agendize it for further discussion. Yeah, this is uh, yeah. Commissioner Thomas. Um, oh, I'm sorry, do you have something to say? Um, oh, no, I was just gonna say that would be a fun topic to, to take on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let, let, let me say, yeah, this is Commissioner Thomas. Uh, let me say I, I, uh, I agree um, I, I agree that uh, we uh, would not want to increase the height limit everywhere. Um, I guess my my question is just by the um, just by the nature of construction of mobile homes, uh, and the, and that's the whole argument here is that you know they don't sit on the ground; they sit raised up, and uh, by that nature um, can. Uh, you know, can, can be driven above that 25 foot limit, uh, which, which my question is, so you're, you're saying by your analysis, you don't see that as a un, you know, kind of a unreasonable hardship or something like that. I guess, I guess I'm asking you to elaborate what, why the whole city, if we're just looking at a specific type of construction that's only allowed in a specific area, why didn't you choose to kind of look at it that way? Um, Commissioner, we, you could look at it that way. For, I guess that'd be the first thing. What we considered in looking at this, though, is creating a separate, um, higher standard for homes within that area, as opposed to the rest of the city, and concerns that other areas would feel they should be able to do that as well. So I, I think that was the equity was kind of the reason that we went the way we went in our recommendation. doesn't oblige the commission to go that way um, in, in making recommendations to the council, however. Um, in that area, as you know, there's the, the two story structures that get built, um, frequently just a little bit of those are the trailer and the rest of it's built sort of as, as single family construction. And with, with, um, if it was built as like a modular structure that was put in there as two stories, um, there are standards in the building code as far as having to, where you set that elevation measurement from, if it needs to be raised up because of floodish, flooding issues, things like that. There are issues for where we actually determine to start that, um, start that measurement from. So they, they're really not in a worse position for the most part than anyone else in, in the city is. Um, but it's the, our recommendation really has more to do with equity and concerns from other parts of the city if we were to allow higher, higher house limits in there. What, what they're trying to get is get away from the standard eight foot floor plates, which, you know, I, I, I understand that desire. It's, it's kind of an old school floor plate and, uh, you know, most newer homes are built with a nine or even 10 foot floor plate or more if you can get away with it. 
Um, but within 25 foot height, even like the house that we looked at the, earlier this evening, they wouldn't be able to get, it would be very difficult for them with a hip roof to get anything more than an eight foot floor plate in that new, that addition to that single family house on 17th street. Uh, well, I, Chair, can I just add one comment on this issue? I don't believe I was at the meeting where you may have discussed this question, but there's also a, an issue of state preemption that we would have to look at if we're talking about height limits inside a mobile home park in the city, as opposed to constructing a single manufactured home on a single lot in the city. So that is just something we would need to look at because of the special state statutes and regulations that deal with mobile home parks, including not, their construction. Not all homes in the trailer park are built on trailers. In some cases, they first of all, they don't own the, the individual lots, They're, they lease them. But there are some homes, mobile homes that are moved in and they are not put on trailers they're just moved in yeah i understand that i, I guess i was thinking about manufactured homes you know i, I want to be careful because this isn't like an agendized item or anything like that right. so yeah um yeah uh, so, can, can i ask this can i ask this is that can we can we ask for kind of um uh, you know i don't i, I guess um I, I, I can't because again, this isn't agendized, so I want to be very careful here, but, but I think this warrants maybe a little more than just kind of a, we think that it's, we recommend not doing it uh, because of consistency with other parts of the community. Seems like it, it's a little deeper than that. Um, you could so ask that it be brought back, um, have staff come back with an item on the agenda reporting on what what was found i think i think i'd like that i think i'd like to see something uh in in writing can it can i just ask for that um uh assistant uh city attorney grayson <laughs> yeah you can you can certainly request that an item be scheduled on the agenda at a future meeting uh, again i i'm not completely sure what the issue was but yes, that would that would ensure that you would be able to talk about, you know, an item properly agendized so there would no not be any Brown Act issue, even that, you know, if it's done as a report without, you know, depending on on how staff decides the best approach to present it to you. Sure. And then and that would allow folks to chime in both, you know, for and against the the issue, right? In a in a in a public air in a public arena and yes, give that chance to to figure out what what people in the community uh, want and believe. If it's on the agenda, anybody can speak on it um, through public comment. That's correct. Um, well, I I think I'd like that rather than just kind of throwing it, you know, saying well it's a bad idea because it's inconsistent and and that may be true. By the way, I'm I I don't know. Um, and have you had a request from someone in the trailer park to uh, alter the height limit? Yeah, uh, yes, I've heard from my constituents that uh, that the, they believe that the uh, uh, some of them believe that the height limit uh, unreasonably restricts them from being able to build a modern manufactured home. And well, they all go to a lot of them go two stories. No, I understand the the, the issue, um, Commissioner Campbell, was that that in order to get like standard walls uh, to a standard, today's standard height, they, they need about somewhere between, I think it was between 15 and 20 extra inches above 25 feet in order to do that. Um, um, I'm, I'm gonna suggest because the issue has been raised about Brown Act that we not have any further discussion and that if you would like this item brought back, then you would be able to more, you know, fully discuss and, and give any other appropriate direction as you might deem. You yeah, know, thank you, Amy. I, I, think that's, I think that's correct. I think what, I, what I'm asking is, and I'm not sure if this requires a motion or, or if it, you know, or what it requires. However, what I think it makes sense is for a future meeting uh, for staff to present 
uh, you know, uh, kind of a general response to uh, uh, a letter that we received from a member of the community um, that uh, I, I'm not sure how that was submitted through planning department, but it's kind of a response to that letter for planning commission to consider recommending a change to the development standard. Can I, ask I, I don't think you, I don't think you should take any action. I think you, you have made your view known, and I think the, com the staff can go from there. That okay. would be my recommendation. It is not an agendized action item, and you've requested to staff that it be brought back. Amy, you have, you, have, you have said what I would like perfectly. So <laughs> if we could do that. I, I, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 I'm, that, that, that's really what, uh, what I think I would like. That's what I'd like, is for a future agenda item to be able to discuss this. Staff could do that. Can I ask you who wrote that letter? Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, Lynn, gosh darn, Lynn Larson. Oh, I don't know what name she used because she uses different names. Uh, Al Ferry, her name is Lynn Al Ferry and she lives in the, she lives in the. What is her name park. again? Lynn Al Ferry. And she is a very, uh, she's a, a very uh, important community member, very interested in the, uh, the health and livelihood of Seal Beach and, uh, and a friend of mine. Okay, Lynn Al Ferry. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Thomas. Okay, and thank you I'd all. I'd be interested to hear what the uh, community of Silver Beach Shores has to say about this. More and than and anybody... the greater community for that matter. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, about 20 years ago, when um, Richard Hall bought the trailer park and we had all that big hustle over it, um, Paul Yost and I were on a subcommittee of two and we worked with the people over in the trailer park to uh, get them a bond funding so that they could take the park back and eventually pay it off. And uh, so I got very involved in it and it was uh, it's very interesting. Made some good friends. I think they only have like 10 more years, right? Sorry, what? I think they have like 10 more years of that bond funding to, to get it back. Uh, well, it I think they've got more because they did some, um, they yep. did some re refunding of it. Uh, they, and, uh, that cost them time, so it got extended. This is Rondi Winkler again. This is not an agendized item. I'm a little puzzled why we're taking so much time talking about it. It's a good question. I'm through talking about it. Yes, um, Mr. Chairman, staff will come back at a, at a subsequent meeting with that information. Thank you. I have one uh, comment. Uh, the last comment on the emailed comments is brings up it's uh, from Stacy Browning, and she brings up something that I've talked I talked to uh, Director Johnson about a number of times about expediting some of these uh, CUPs these MUPs these requests that are kind of like um, I, I, I think what she says in here as far as like when it's a case by case basis it makes people hesitant to to say yes we're for it because. Maybe when they go to do it, it gets turned down for a reason or another. Has there been any more further conversations about moving these along without bringing these to these uh, meetings? Does that um, make sense? Mr. Chairman, is the is the question to relook at what requires hearing yes. before the commission? Yes, um, like what you like what you guys would just approve. Like you know, Marco does his analysis, and you guys say yes, this is good. I mean, I know it's not three feet nine inches, but it's three feet, and everybody knows that it's going. Well, not everybody knows. More than likely, it's going to get approved that's the question so um mr, mr. chairman that that is absolutely a, that, that's a very good question um i was unaware that there, there was an issue with it that's i think i apologize but when when uh mr johnson and i traded hats um I, that was an issue i was not aware of um but that is something we're, we're looking at putting together a number of code cleanup items that are more Somewhat, some of them are larger, some are smaller, but one could absolutely be to relook at what requires discretionary approval and, and even set up some performance standards that if it meets these, it's okay, you don't need to come to the commission. Right. Um, for instance, as, as you pointed out on this one, it, it's only minimally out of compliance with the code and the addition itself is fully in compliance with the code. Things like that could be, you know, staff level approvals or staff has the authority to approve it, but sends out something to the commission in advance of doing that. The commission can call it up before it goes final. 
Um, I will pass that on to Alexa is something to consider for the code cleanup um, because it's, it's wise for the city to periodically relook at what requires discretionary approvals because times change, people's attitudes change. Um, what used to be super important may not be that important anymore. So it's good to relook at those things periodically. Thank you. I enjoy hearing these things. I, I like, I like to learn. I mean, this is how we learn and all that good stuff, but I think as an applicant, I'm sure they would love to get their answer a lot quicker. And I think sure. that benefits everybody. But so thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Yeah. Are there any other commissioner comments? Well, I, I, this is commissioner Thomas, I, I do think it's appropriate to uh, thank uh, interim director Curtis for uh, stepping in, uh, in short notice and, uh, shepherding us through the past uh, couple months. I want you to know, Barry, I, I appreciate it very much. And, uh, yeah. um, uh, and uh, we'll miss you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Commissioner. I appreciate that. Barry, wish you well. So, sorry we didn't see more of you. Uh, it was interesting for you to come back a second time because when I first got on the Planning Commission, you were with, in the planning staff. Yeah. That was back in 93. Yeah. So this, I guess we're getting old is what you're saying. That's when we worked, <laughs> first worked together. So it was, yes, it was good having you back. Thank you. Me too. I, I, I agree with those sentiments. Thank you for everything. Thanks. If that's it, then I'll adjourn the Planning Commission meeting to Monday, November 15th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.